Hello everyone. I've been reading The Spanish Holocaust by Paul Preston, and I wanted to talk about the reasons for anti-clerical violence by anarchists during the Spanish Civil War. Preston, explaining his title, said that those who justified the slaughter of innocent Spaniards used an anti-Semitic rhetoric and frequently claimed that they had to be exterminated because they were the instruments of a Jewish Bolshevik Masonic conspiracy. This anti-Semitism was coming from the Catholic Church and the fascists. The Catholic Church also invented the idea of Jewishness as a race in the 15th century so that they could claim that even if you converted to Christianity, you would still have so-called Jewish blood. In the lead-up to the Spanish Civil War, there was a Carlist movement of Catholic traditionalists, which had a counter-revolutionary agenda and rejected Enlightenment values. Their values were summed up in the slogan, Religion, Fatherland, Family, Order, Work, Property. What this meant was deeply authoritarian. Preston writes, Religion referred to the Catholic Church's monopoly of educational and religious practice. Fatherland meant no challenge to Spanish centralism from the regional nationalisms. And just to interject, I would give Basque nationalism as an example. Family denoted the subservient position of women and the prohibition of divorce. Order meant no toleration of public protest. Work referred to the duties of the labouring masses. Property meant the privileges of the landowners, whose position must remain unchallenged. Carlism is considered to be a fringe element in politics today. Preston also notes that in 1912 there was the founding of the National Anti-Masonic and Anti-Semitic League, which was supported by 22 Spanish bishops. He says, The Bishop of Almeria wrote that everything is ready for the decisive battle that must be unleashed between the children of light and the children of darkness, between Catholicism and Judaism, between Christ and the devil. There was the Primo de Rivera regime during the Restoration Era. Rivera was a dictator, and one of his propagandists, a right-wing poet called Josie Pemartin, alleged that the left was made up of dogmatists, deluded by democratic ideas, and that leftists had some kind of mental illness. The Second Spanish Republic was established in 1931 and was met with a great deal of right-wing paranoia. The Carlists formed a party called the Traditionalist Communion in 1932, which was linked with Franco's fascist phalange. According to Preston, the Carlist Traditionalist Communion alleged in El Signo Futuro, its newspaper, that Jews controlled the economy, politics, the press, literature and the entertainment world through which they propagated immorality and the brutalisation of the masses. It alleged that the dismantling of the monarchy and the establishment of the Republic was a Jewish conspiracy. The Republican government was attempting to break up the power of the Catholic Church, and the Church was having none of it. The Spanish Confederation of Autonomous Right-Wing Groups was an authoritarian Catholic party which denied outright the democratic legitimacy of the Republic and supported the use of violence against it. There was also the National Action Party, which brought together two Catholic organisations which proclaimed total submission to the ecclesiastic authorities. This party had the same slogan as the Carlists, religion, fatherland, family, order, work, property. And Herrera Oria was an influential militantly Catholic figure behind that. Again, the charge that supporters of the Republic were mentally ill was made, and it was said that the dregs of society inundated the streets and squares, convulsing and shuddering like epileptics. The Catholic Church was a deeply elitist organisation which, as well as being anti-Semitic, dehumanised supporters of the Republic. Now, on the part of the left, some people were involved in burning churches and throwing stones at priests in 1931. They may or may not have been anarchists, but they were definitely Republicans who had political problems with the church because of its identification with right-wing politics. Anarchists were very hostile towards the church and had a ferocious iconoclasm, according to Preston. You can take that as a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. Basque traditionalists, which is distinct from Basque nationalists, also founded the deeply anti-Semitic magazine Los Hijos del Pueblo, which also claimed that the Republic was the creation of an international Jewish conspiracy. In fairness, some of the fledgling Republican government's anti-clerical measures may have gone too far, for example, prohibiting the ringing of bells. I take the same view as the CNT, which is that the Republican government was an instrument of oppression. 
On the surface, the ringing of bells isn't in itself oppressive. However, if you consider the historical context and the fact that the Catholic Church was a hotbed of anti-Semitism and fascism, the ringing of bells may have been a lot less innocuous than you might think. Ring the bells and gather to spread dehumanizing propaganda in support of the monarchy and against the working class. There were several church burnings in 1932, which may or may not have been carried out by anarchists. It should also be added that the condition of the working class in Spain when the Republic was established was dreadful. There was a serious problem of malnourishment to the extent that some people had swollen bellies and were skin and bone to look at. Consider the dehumanising rhetoric from the Catholic Church about people shuddering like epileptics and how enraging it would be to hear that. It would be highly charitable not to be violent in response to that. So when we consider the violence that anarchists engaged in during the Spanish Civil War, it's important to recognise that the church was a deeply reactionary institution. It wasn't like, oh no, anarchists are attacking these poor innocent priests who want nothing but peace. They supported the monarchy, they were anti-Semitic, and they were the movement behind Franco. They had to be destroyed. To quote Deruti, the only church that illuminates is a burning one. Many thanks to my contributors on Patreon. Brandon Halkus Tischer, Comrade Dr. Fraser Crane, Crouton and Baguette, Cyclodeon, Deviath Fur, Dracur, Flagburner, Jack Bryant, Joe Martin, Comrade Klaus, Michael Norling, Patrick Gordon, Richard Pearson, Vrissa Jures, and Triple X, Swagmaster 420, Triple X. This has been Libertarian Socialist Rants. Thanks for watching.